If you're in need of a website or domain, then check out today's sponsor, Squarespace. Hello everyone, hope you're doing well and thanks for joining us for another video. And this is actually a video that has been very highly requested in response to Flatzoid, who seems to think he knows more about photography than photographers. So highly requested in fact that even Flatzoid himself has asked I do it. Great, so Dave McKeegan, would you please do this with a further observation please? Maybe do a 10 meter or 60 meter, doesn't matter. So, all of this began a few weeks back when Flatsoid did a live stream about a quite well-known photograph amongst Flat Earth. This photo, taken by photographer Kevin Jackson in 2021, taken from Southport Beach, looking towards Blackpool with the hills of the Lake District in the background. This photograph actually converted at least one Flat Earther, Ranty, who realised that as we know the heights of Blackpool Tower and the hills in the background, and we know their respective distances, from the photographer, then if the Earth were flat from that location, the angular size of the mountains would make them appear taller than the tower, and that the reason they don't is due to the curve of Earth. This photograph sent flat Earthers scrambling for a viable explanation that was based on flat Earth, with Flatoid's latest explanation being that apparently it's caused by lens compression, and that zooming in causes the background to drop down. Hmm, okay. So based on this, did changing a lens cause the Earth to curve more? Yeah. Hmm, weird. So using a higher millimeter lens, aka a larger focal length, causes more foreshortening, yeah. so more occultation due to the forced perspective, mm -hmm. therefore giving the appearance that things are going over a curve. Which is odd, because supposedly zooming in also pulls objects back from beyond the horizon as well. I don't know, maybe lenses are conscious beings that are feng shuiing each photo. So in this video I'll break down why lens compression isn't really a thing anyway, and why zooming in doesn't magically drop the background down. And don't worry if you're not particularly photography savvy, I'll try and keep it as straightforward and as easy to follow as Squarespace does for those who aren't savvy with creating websites. Because Squarespace makes creating a website so hassle-free. You simply select the base template from the many available, and then set about customising it to suit you. Add a portfolio gallery, a blog section, a video library, or an online store to sell your products, which you can then run and maintain from Squarespace as well, with a complete analytics section so that you can monitor your website traffic. Set up an online calendar for customers to easily book with you, or use their marketing section to send out emails to all your subscribers, and much more. But see what Squarespace can do for you by signing up for a completely free trial using my link squarespace.com forward slash Dave McKeegan. And if you use the code Dave McKeegan at checkout, you'll receive 10% off your first purchase. So Flatsoid found this video from Photography Online, which is demonstrating how focal length can change the look of a photograph. Now this often gets referred to as lens compression, but in reality com lens compression doesn't really exist. It's merely a combination of perspective, angle of view, and depth of field. That the longer the focal length is you're using, the tighter your angle of view becomes. A bit like holding a cardboard tube up to your eye, except with a lens it expands the bit that you can see to completely fill your vision. It involves perspective in the sense of the difference in relative distances between you, your subject, and the background. I.e., if you're two meters from your subject and the background is one meter behind them, then you're three meters away from the background and the subject is relatively closer to the background than to you. But if you were to move one meter closer, you're moving one meter closer to both the subject and the background, but now the subject is one meter away from you and the background is two meters away from you, meaning the subject is now halfway between you and the background. And then depth of field, which is how blurred the outer focus parts of a photograph look. And this depends on firstly how far away the background is from the plane of focus and how wide the aperture of the lens is set to. The wider the iris opening, the more blurry things look. All these combine in the idea of lens compression, because 
If you use a wide angle lens to photograph a person and you want them to fill the photo, then you need to be very close to them. But this will then distort their features because say their nose would be proportionally much closer to the camera than their ears are. And because the aperture F number is a ratio of focal length to aperture diameter, a 20 millimeter focal length that say aperture of f4 would mean the aperture diameter is about five millimeters which doesn't produce much blurring to anything before or after the plane of focus switching to a 200 millimeter focal length though if you were to stay in exactly the same place would basically mean the subject's nose would fill the photo but you could utilize that narrower angle of view to move yourself much further away while still keeping them filling the frame. This means the difference in relative distance of all of their body features would be much less now, and they would look more like what we expect them to. Plus, at 200 millimeters and f4 would mean the aperture iris diameter is now 50 millimeters, and so would be able to produce much more blurring. But from a fixed position and with a fixed iris diameter in millimeters, the look of an image should be exactly the same at any focal length. The only difference would be how much of the scene the sensor can pick up due to the angle of view of the lens. But you could then crop in wider angle photos and produce exactly the same angle of view and thus basically exactly the same image just at a lower resolution. Flatsoid's take from the photography online video though was that in the comparison shot between a telephoto lens versus a wide angle lens cropped in, taking the same distance away from the subject, the objects that are visible in the background of the wide angle shot aren't visible in the telephoto lens shot. This is the 12 millimeters from 16 uh, meters away. This is the 200 millimeters from 16 away. You can see the proportions are the same based on the subject, but the background in proportion to the subject has changed dramatically dramatically you can't see the mountain anymore with the 200 millimeter and so he draws the conclusion that it's because zooming in moves the background down and so therefore what we see as a horizon isn't actually caused by the curve of earth but is instead us not being able to zoom in to see what's out there because everything gets pushed down as we zoom in, I think. Although I'm not entirely sure as to what exactly it's getting pushed down behind in order to block its view. Either way, it doesn't really matter because this has nothing to do with lenses moving objects around. This is merely a case of the photograph being taken from different heights because the photographer was hand holding the camera and it wasn't a proper scientific experiment. They weren't being particularly precise. A point which the photographer themselves confirmed in the comments stating the shots were taken from slightly different vantage points. A point which was highlighted to Flatsoid during a debate he was having with FTFE about it. What claim? Just because the guy can't accept that he, you notice he crouched exactly the same position. He's the reason he is having excuses like this. And note that crazy flat earth guy, by the way, he's quoting me guys, because yeah, he's yeah. getting inundated by globe trolls asking him, why are you at the same elevation? But Flatsoid's dismissing that as propaganda and seems to think he knows more about the circumstances of a photo than the person that actually took the photo. And by the way, <laughs> Photography Online is a whole bunch of experts, not just one guy, they're a team of experts. They are really good at what they do, so if you're saying they're wrong, then there's something wrong with you. Well, well, well. How the turntables... To which Flatsoid's response was that the photographer was just making excuses and that the photos had to have been taken from the same height because in the video, we see the photographer kneel down both times. Unfortunately, Flatsoid seems to have overlooked the magic of video editing. That means the photos displayed on screen wouldn't necessarily have had to have been taken at that exact moment in time. And likely the photographer took a few different images and the ones that were used in the video just happened to be the ones that look best. But during that live stream, I then messaged FTFE with a comparison shot that I'd done myself for a video I made about two years ago to also talking about how lens compression isn't a thing. 
and this comparison was done with the camera on a tripod, so remaining a fixed height. And you can see that the light doesn't magically drop down between the two images. However, Flatoid still wouldn't accept this. Firstly, trying to claim that it was because it was only done over a short distance, the distance being about four meters from one side of the room to the other. And then he began trying to compare the two images up to show that they didn't perfectly line. Okay. You can see wall between there. Do you see wall between there? No, you don't. By comparing the left side of one image to the right side of the other image and saying that the bricks didn't line up, and then stretching his excuse to the, the fact that the lights looking through the car window aren't pixel perfect to each other. Now, in reality, those images are not a 100% perfect match. Not because of any magic, simply that, well, in order for me to keep the camera the same distance away, I had to have the camera itself attached to the tripod. One of the lenses that I was using was a dainty little 35mm lens. The only telephoto lens I owned at the time was a Sigma 150-600mm to lens which weighed over 2 kilos by itself. The lens had a tripod collar which would allow me to directly mount the lens to the tripod, but doing so would have changed the height of the camera and moved the camera sensor further away and the 35mm lens had no facility for me to mount it at that exact same spot, so I just left the camera attached to the tripod both times. But with that much weight hanging off the front, despite my best efforts, it's likely going to cause even a minor drop in angle of the camera, which would then slightly impact the perspective between the car and the light. Not enough to create any meaningful difference that would alter the point that I was trying to demonstrate from a purely photography-based video, but obviously I hadn't factored in that this would one day become some key evidence in an argument about the shape of the Earth. This whole saga continued beyond this live stream with a few other people making response videos to Flatoid, who subsequently responded to them, including one from Eduardo Igarisu, who took three photos on their phone, which they state was placed on top of a railing, and Flatsoid proceeds to go full pixel peeping on it to show that a bollard in the images looks slightly different heights between the photos. Yeah. These are the different focal lengths. Let's start with the bottom of those poles. First pole looks higher. This is the focal length that was the smallest, by the way. The one that went a bit larger, because it's in a bit more focus as well, seems to have that pole at a lower altitude compared to where Andrew's standing. You see what I'm saying? Except while the phone height might be fixed thanks to the railing, the phone itself isn't completely fixed in place because it can still pivot and tilt. In fact, if you find the center of each image by putting lines from the corners, you can see, particularly with the widest lens, they're not all aimed at the exact same spot. Not to mention that even if the phone were fixed in place, a phone with multiple cameras means that each camera is in a slightly different position. Not really an issue in demonstrations such as this, where it's meant to be debunking claims that the background drops at longer focal lengths, but seems Flatsoid is now diverting away from his original claim into nitpicking about individual pixels. But, since I made the aforementioned video, I've invested in some more lenses which include other telephoto lenses that aren't as heavy. And within Flatsoid's initial excuse about my comparison, he alluded to them being done over too short of a distance to see any change, and challenged me to go and repeat this over longer distances. Great, so Dave McKeegan, would you please do this with a further observation please? Maybe do a 10 meter or 16 meter, doesn't matter. So I did. The other day I took a drive out to Pennington Flash Nature Reserve near Manchester. I parked up on one side of the lake, across which is the Lee and Lowton Sailing Club located 1.13 kilometers away across the lake. I set my camera up looking at an information board just in front of me, and then took photos at four different focal lengths without moving the camera, but I'm not going to say which images are which here, because I'm going to make this a blind test for Flatsoid to try and support his claim about being able to tell the images apart based on the background shifting. 
One I shot at 20mm f2, one was shot at 40mm f4, one at 70mm f7.1, and the last at 180mm f18. The camera was in the same spot for each photo. Those focal lengths and f numbers mean that each was shot with an aperture iris of about 10mm. However, there is still normally a way to be able to distinguish between photos in a comparison of a telephoto lens versus a wide angle cropped in because the telephoto lens doesn't need to be cropped in. So the photos that I took were all taken on a camera with a 33 megapixel resolution. So the 180 mil shot will be a 33 megapixel image. However, whilst the 20 mil shot was a 33 megapixels to begin with, cropped in to match the 180 mil shot, the final image is less than half a megapixel. So just showing you the straight crops of the originals will be fairly straightforward to distinguish based on how clear the photos look, rather than anything to do with the actual composition. However, when the difference in clarity is removed, telling them apart becomes much harder. As Flatsoid himself managed to prove in his own live stream when he showed my toy car comparison shots and asked one of his viewers to say which was shot with the wide angle lens, Okay, I'm not going to say anything. Michael, which one would you say is the larger focal length there, just by looking at this? It's on a tripod, same camera, it just changed the lens. Just by looking at it. Yeah. Why not laugh? Which, with well, this one? Yeah. Which would you say is that, the larger focal length? The larger. No, that's the smaller. Is it? Yeah, that's the larger. And they guessed wrong. But in that instance, he was showing a fairly low quality version of the images, so it was hard to see any difference in clarity. If you were to look at the original versions, you can clearly tell that the telephoto image looks clearer because it's not had to have been cropped in. But it's important to remember that it's our distance to the subject which is changing perspective, not the focal length. So don't wrongly assume that focal length can squash or stretch a scene. A lens can't bend the laws of physics, it just focuses the light onto the sensor. Focal length does nothing but magnify that image. That's it. And by the way, <clears throat> Photography Online is a whole bunch of experts. Not just one guy, they're a team of experts. They are really good at what they do, so if you're saying they're wrong, then there's something wrong with you. So, with the images from Pennington Flash, I've compressed all four shots to give them equal resolutions. And here they are in no particular order. So again, one of these was shot at 20 mil, one at 40, one at 70, and one at 180 mil with their respective F numbers to give apertures as close as possible to matching. Although do bear in mind, these likely won't be exact due to them being with different lenses and having potentially slight variations in distortion. Also, stated focal lengths of lenses are often rounded figures and not exact, and those figures are based on the lens being focused out to infinity. For many lenses, the field of view can shift when you focus closer. Anyway, the all images were all then cropped and resized to align with each other and then compressed down to have equal clarity. I mean, you can see that the clouds and the water are different between each one, so none of them are duplicates to try and trick anybody but I'm not going to say which image was shot with which focal length right now, because I'm curious to see, can Flatsoid correctly identify the four different focal lengths based purely on the movement of the background? Although to my eye, I'm not seeing any drastic changes between the backgrounds at 20 mil versus 180 mil, which was his claim to begin with based on the photography online video. The theory of lens compression would tell you that the shot with 150 mil would have more compression that the light in the background should appear larger compared to the car than it does with the 35 yeah um if you had a larger distance not just three meters away you'd see more apparent dis uh, change so that's what i said this is actually i don't know willfully ignorant he's being dishonest or he's uh just doesn't know distance makes a difference so if he did the same thing again now let's say 20 meters away he would have a different a much larger percentage difference of compression compared to what it is now three meters away 
I will probably update this video in the future with a note below to say which image was which, or perhaps do another video if Flatsoid does attempt to do the test. But until then, this is going to wrap this video up. Thanks once again to Squarespace for sponsoring the video. Feel free to leave your guesses below which image you think is which. If you've enjoyed this video and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons, and hopefully, we'll see you in the next video.